In this module, I'm going to share with you the process I use to come up with videos that people actually want to watch. So follow this process to not only A, help you kind of get some ideas of videos to create, but most importantly, B, how to title the videos and structure the videos so that people watch them. The, the, the attention span and just kind of the intent of people on YouTube is just a little bit different when they're versus when they're watching video on Facebook or somewhere else. So you want to make sure if you're producing these great videos that they're made in a way that people are likely to click and watch them. So pay attention to the titling and the topic part as well. And I uh, hope you enjoy this module. And what that is, is to, it's the process I use um, to turn, you know, to basically do some quick research and turn that research into videos that people actually want to watch. Because again, going back to, or just talking about the YouTube ranking formula for ranking videos organically, the more people are engaged on your videos and the more they watch, the better your videos are going to get ranked. Uh, now, we're, this course, we're kind of hitting from more of the paid side because that's the faster way to get the traffic. But since we're in here, we might as well do it the right way to help us get ranked faster organically. So that's why we're going to follow this process. And, and the formula goes like this. We take questions, uh, we turn them, we extract keywords from those questions, and then we use the auto-suggest tool inside of YouTube to turn those into video topics. And just a quick note, um, you know, this is where it's important. You all filled out on the form, you know, some information about your customer avatar because we want to think through their eyes when we're going through this process and using this formula. So it's very good. I mean, you guys all had pretty good responses about um, kind of the demographics and age and, 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 and some of the questions that they were asking uh, as far as who you who your target prospects were. So with the questions, because we're on YouTube uh, and these people are more in stage four and stage five of their marketing you know, sophistication, um, we want to think about you know what are the questions that they're asking related to your industry's galaxy. And, and the reason I use the word galaxy is because it's we're open to very broad questions. The one tricky part about YouTube is you don't very often like the narrow questions like you know, how do I get a, um, how do I get a trucker job, you know, or how do I, how do I get hired for a trucker for, for Jack? Like that's not, most people are not really typing that into YouTube. So instead we have to kind of look through their eyes and just think about what are just, you know, random, um, problems, pains, you know, curiosity, things that they're wondering about related to, you know, their lifestyle in your industry. So in the trucking industry, it may be like, you know, how to, you know, I don't know, I'm not in there, but it could be like how to, you know, what's the best CB to use? Uh, what are the, you know, what are the, the call signs that you use? Like stuff that has really nothing to do directly, you know, Jack, that had really, none of that has anything directly to do with finding, you know, a new, a new employer. But those are the type of things that people who would be interested in finding a new employer um, and our truck drivers would be typing in. Uh, so that's that's kind of one example. Um, so Paul, like for for you, it's a little more direct as far as you know. They're they're going to be looking at you know what what are the best kind of shoes for runners? Uh, what is the best you know what is the workout? Um, how long can I run? How long should I run? What should I eat? I mean, it goes on and on as far as just broad questions and none of them are, they may not be asking like, how do I win first place or anything like that, but just broad questions related to your topic. Um, and so some of this you've kind of already done by answering in, in the uh, questionnaire on the intake form. So you can go back to that. Everyone should have gotten a copy. Um, you can go back to that and look at the top questions and look at the top pains and just kind of write out a list of like seven to 10, of these questions and then once we have those questions uh, so here's so I went through some examples for my country channel so you know how can I learn to country dance how do I two-step what moves do I need to know like what are good country songs um, that's kind of you know that's not about dancing specifically but it's in the it's in that it's in the dance galaxy you know and what are the best boots to dance or what kind of clothes what kind of outfit should I wear when I'm dancing how do I ask someone to dance in the same galaxy, but they're not all about what is the step-by-step, play-by-play of how to move my feet when I dance, because there's a lot of related content um, 
to you know learning how to dance so from from that list of questions that you draw up and again this this is a process so you don't have to do it once and then you can never think of something again it's it's more of like go through it come up and uh, there's a worksheet i'll send you later today and it's really just come up with five to seven questions and from those questions we pull out you know what are what are the core keywords inside of these questions so in the in my example we've got country swing dancing two-step dance country dance moves how to country dance you know country boots dance country dance songs just the core you know the core keywords pulling out um, of the questions and then what we do from there is we take those keywords and we use the youtube auto suggestion tool to find popular basically to, to validate that these are what this is something that people are interested in and also um, to give us video topics and titles so what you do is you take one keyword at a time you type it I don't know if that's blocking um, you type it into YouTube you go to YouTube type it in and leave off the last two letters um, and when you leave off the last two letters you'll start to see the, the auto suggest just like you see on Google now just I want to clarify this is on YouTube so this is not on this is not on Google this is on youtube.com and you type in some of those keywords and you'll start to get a list of basically done for you video titles and topics so here I've got you know country swing dancing country swing dance moves country swing dancing for beginners uh, and so like country swing dancing for beginners that was like the first uh, video let me pull it up here that I did because I went through this process and I was like okay that's good and it's it's specific and so country swing dancing for beginners um, and you can see here like this is only you know one month ago now this isn't like a super competitive niche but none of you well um, you know Beverly and Paul you guys might be in a little bit more competitive but um, you know some of you are not in super competitive niches and so here is here's that video ranking you know organically already one two three so fourth one down um, and it'll probably just go up even more, but that's because it's it's it speaks to you know swing dancing for beginners, and that itself it's going to help you create the video because you're like okay I'm I'm talking about you know swing dancing for beginners, so you're not like overloading people again. Remember with videos, I want you to think of them as like instead of the video being a whole meal. Each of these videos should be like a piece of the meal. So, you know, this video might be the vegetable, and another video is the steak, and another one is the potato. Like, we don't want to put them all in one video because it's just too much for people to eat in in one bite. So, the smaller you chunk down your videos, the better. And this process kind of helps do that for you. Now, there's some there's some screening here as far as like obviously you're not gonna you know we don't you don't have to target everything in here. Um, but it just helps generate ideas and so basically what i do is put these in a spreadsheet um, so i've got them here and you'll get a copy you know an empty spreadsheet for you to fill out so you have kind of a list of you know here's how to country dance with a partner so there we can talk about i could go into talking about um, the dynamics you know feeling with your partner that you need to smile and have fun and and that would be a simple short you know three minute video that talks exactly what they about exactly what they're interested in and this is also what you'd use you know for the for titling and naming your video um, like you can see here it's country swing dancing for beginners how to country swing so it's got that keyword right in there and I'll there's a worksheet later on the next module that will go over you know how to title and tag and all that so we don't need to get too deep in there but just I want you to kind of see how this process works and then on the right hand side you can see here that look like when I started to type in uh, which keyword was it so it was country boots dance um, because that was going back to what are the best boots to dance in and when I type that in that's you know there there's nothing really coming up for that so that doesn't mean not to make the video at some point but it just means I wouldn't put it in a high priority because Google uh, YouTube and Google use the autocomplete like that's based on search volume because right now there is no direct YouTube keyword tool um, so this is kind of the best sense 
for us to see, okay, you know, what is the popularity or, or, or how many people are kind of searching for it. So um, now, again, when you get more niche, like what are the best boots for country dance? That's pretty niche and that's pretty specific. Um, so I might make that later knowing that it will help rank um, in Google Organic. I wonder if this is ranked in Google Organic yet. For beginners. Oops. Ah, dang. So not in there yet. But um, when you have niche keyword videos like the country boot, um, country boot one, that might rank in Google Organic pretty faster. And this one, this country swing dance for beginners, it's doing good on the YouTube, but it's still early, so it's not quite in here yet, which is kind of to be expected. But anyways, the point here is just showing that right for this for this first pass of the process, if you're not if it's not showing up a lot of autocomplete searches, I would probably forego it for now. I wouldn't pick it as one of your starting topics. Um, basically, what we're looking here in the action items we'll go over is creating what are called your seed videos, and I like the seed videos to be the more popular ones as far as what people are searching for. Unless you know you, there's a really you know, it's a really big pain point. Um, you know, we can kind of talk on it one-on-one -on -one if you have a question about it. But generally, we want to look for terms and video titles that have some some type of um, video, you know, have some type of search volume. And that's indicated by the number of, of responses that match when you use the autocomplete. So... That is um, basically, you know, that is the process. It's it's very simple, very straightforward. It's something that, you know, as you go through it, you'll be able to do much faster. Uh, again, later today, I'll send you the spreadsheet and the worksheet that goes through this um, so that you can create it for yourself. But that is part one. And what I'm going to do is, is kind of, I've got everyone on mute now, so I'm going to zip through this. It's being recorded and then just open it up to Q&A. I can go back to any slides. But that is the the video content creation formula. And, the, and again, the goal of this is so that when we go make videos, we're not making videos that nobody wants to watch or nobody wants to you know, pay attention to because then we waste all that effort. So this is a, a simple process to make sure we're in the ballpark of, hey, there's some level of interest in what I'm about to talk about. Now, the next the next um, part, the concept I want to introduce you to or, or drill home is, is called the power intro. And this is something that pretty much all of your videos need to have. And it's basically just what it says. It's a quick introduction um, for each video. And when I say quick, I mean real quick. Like we want to get it 15 seconds or less. And, and the more you do it, the, the better you'll get at it. But it has three, three components. It's got a hook credibility component and a call to action. So the hook is telling people, you know, why should they watch this video? You know, what are they going to gain? What will they learn, et cetera? And, and it's just something, it's kind of like the headline of a sales page. It's, it's kind of the the main job of the hook is to get them into, you know, the, the job of the, the job of a headline in a sales page is to get people to read the first sentence. And the job of the hook in a video is to get people to watch, you know, the first 30 seconds, because then ideally the first 30 seconds get them to watch the remainder of the video. Um, so this is where you say it's basically just you repeat the video title. So in the country swing dance video, um, you know, in there I'm like, hey, in this video, we're going to teach you, you know, how to country swing dance for beginners. We're going to teach you some moves for beginners. So it's nothing like you don't have to get fancy. You don't have to get crazy copywriting or anything you just basically tell them like what they're about to watch um, you know on the fitness stuff it's a little more competitive so in those videos I'm like hey you know in this video I'm going to teach you the three best exercises uh, for building bigger arms and and why you need to do them right now you know something that that really grabs their attention and pulls them in again very very short and simple then we roll into the credibility statement and this is you know some type of statement that alludes to, you know, kind of why you're an authority in whatever it is you're about to talk about. Um, now, being on camera automatically kind of makes you an authority. So you already get some authority from being on camera. The But we want to kind of take it to the next level and either use, you know, if you have any type of certification, 
um, in your industry, you can mention that. If you're the president of the company or CEO or director or manager, you, know, you can just say that. You know, I'm the director of marketing. I'm the I'm the owner of this or I'm the CEO. Like it, it doesn't. You don't have to get too technical, um, and you don't have to say a lot. It's just one thing, and you say it almost nonchalantly. So, for my um, Sparta Strength Fitness Channel, I say, "Hey, this is." You know, I, sit, I do my hook, then I say I'm Ryan Masters, Certified Strength and Conditioning Specialist, which is a, a certification in the fitness industry. Um, for for my full strength marketing, I'll often say that I'm a Google Certified Partner, which is like the, you know, the AdWords certification. Um, or maybe I'll say if I'm doing full strength marketing and I'm talking about YouTube, I'll say, you know, this is Ryan in full strength marketing, do my hook. And then I'll say I'm also the host of Sparta Strength, a YouTube channel with over 11 million views. Right. So there's a little bit of a credibility statement there. Um, and then for the country dance, uh, I'll usually kind of blend off, borrow credibility from like my instructors because they're in a lot of the videos. So I'll say, hey, this is on, on the country dance channel. I go by Hunter because that's a more country name. That's my middle name. So I uh, say, hey, this is Hunter and I'm here with my professional dance instructor, Shane and Carrie. Boom. So those are just kind of you can see. I just want you to see examples of three different industries of using that statement. Uh, and again, it can be as simple as I'm the president or, you know, I mean, really the president of your company, not the country, obviously, you know, just, <laughs> uh, but it's just very simple. Don't overthink it. But the, and don't stack on. Don't say I'm, I'm CSCS and this and that and all like just pick one. That's all you need. And then we have a specific single call to action. Now, for most of these starter videos, um, we're probably going to use it to. The call to action is going to be to go, you know, download the report, go opt in, get whatever your lead magnet is, um, because that's the whole point of this course. And it's the fastest way to get the traffic off YouTube. But down the road, uh, if you're looking at really building your YouTube channel uh, from inside the YouTube ecosystem, you may do call. You may have videos where the call to action is, hey, subscribe to this channel. So so the videos come directly to you. Um there is a book, uh, The Psychology of Influence by Cialdini, and he talked about one of his studies where basically it's like, you know, there's a lot of psych, you know, psycho psychology of how people respond to things, and sometimes it doesn't make sense. And they did this one experiment where they are, there's people in line for to use a copier, and they had the person go up to someone in line and say, hey, can I cut in front of you? I need to make copies. So that was the first person, and, and they recorded how many people you know let them uh, do it. Then they had the person go up and say, "Hey, can I cut in front of you? I need to make copies because I'm in a rush, um, or I'm late for a meeting. You know, some kind of urgency." And there was a big bump in the number of people who let them cut in front. Then they did a th another person, another test where same thing, but the guy goes up and says, "Hey, can I cut in front of you? I have blonde hair." Or something that was totally not even relevant, like it didn't even matter. And that almost had the same lift as the person who said, um, I have something important to do. So all that to say that when you're doing a call to action in your video and really in anything, even if you're talking to your spouse or somebody, you're asking them to do something. If you, put, if you have a reason why, and even if it's like, I mean, in the video, we don't want to say, we don't want to use a dumb reason or reason doesn't make sense, but just put a reason why. So when I say, hey, subscribe, when I'm doing a subscribe call to action, I say, hey, subscribe to my channel so these videos come directly to you. Well, I mean, duh, of course, that's what happens when you subscribe. They come right to you. But it, it kind of, it's that benefit reason of why they should subscribe instead of say, instead of just saying, hey, subscribe to my channel. And same thing with the lead magnet. Hey, um, call to action is click on the link below to download the free report. So you can build bigger arms or whatever the, the benefit is. Just make sure you tack that in there when you're doing the call to action. And um, also we want, and I'll, this will be in the worksheet for next week, but the call to action in all of our videos, we're going to have a link in the first line of the description that points them to wherever the lead magnet page is. And the reason we do use the power intro um, is because as you'll see later, this is a this is a graph from YouTube Analytics showing how how many people are still watching the video by the time it's over, and for the most part, it's pretty consistent as far as by the end of the video, you're down to 20, 25 percent of the people are still there, and a lot of a lot of people on YouTube now wait till the end of the video to ask people, you know, ask the 
viewers to do something, but you've already lost three quarters of your audience. So we can certainly ask people here, but the power intro goes right in the front and it's actually right in the very beginning when you have the most people. Now it's a balancing act. And the reason why we do it quick is because if you have a whole minute, you know, where you're talking about, you know, we're going on and on about these, the power intro, well, people are just not going to watch the video. So it's short and sweet. Um, it tells them why they should watch this video, why you have some level of credibility and uh, what it is you want them to do. Because quite frankly, like, they don't, if we're trying to, if this is a lead magnet video, we're trying to get people to opt in. Well, I don't, you know, it doesn't really matter if they watch the video, like they can leave right at the beginning and go opt in. Um, but what will happen usually is they'll watch some of the video just to make sure like that, that you're getting, that they're getting value, that you know what you're talking about. Um, and then they'll go, they'll go opt into whatever your lead magnet is. And, um, yeah, so that is the that's a power intro, and again, we're going to use that for pretty much uh, all of the the initial videos that you make, and it's one of those things that you'll get better at it the more that you do it, uh, you'll be able to go through it fast faster. But another, um, well, here's the action items. So the the we're going to use the for this this week, I want you to use the video creation formula to generate a list of 40 plus topics, and you're going to put that in a spreadsheet, um, and from there, you know, I want you to bold you know, the top five video topics based on, you know, volume and what you're comfortable talking about, what you want to talk about, because um, that's what we're, we're going to use the following week to start actually filming the videos. And I'll send you a worksheet um, with instructions on that. And then we're also going to have you create your power intro script, um, which I will send you a worksheet, which has kind of like a template of, of the power intro script. You just kind of fill in some stuff. Um, and that way you'll have those two items and we will be ready to rock with actually, you know, producing the videos. And after we produce the videos, then we will start sending traffic to them. But that's the, that's kind of the lowdown uh, of this, this module. So when I go ahead and take it back up front here and open it up to, to questions that you all, you all may have. Let's, if we can, let's start with questions related to this module. And then if there's stuff about last week, we can get into those too. So you can uh, just, you know, raise your hand or speak in here. I think I just unmuted everybody. Um, pop your question in the chat box, whatever is strikes your fancy and we'll start diving away. Oh, morning, Ryan. This is Corey. Hey, Corey. And, uh, How you morning. Doing? Good, good. Good morning, everyone. Well, I'm telling you, I am just uh, jumping out of my skin of uh, how exciting this is. And, um, you know, just just making a couple tweaks uh, uh, from last week, I've already seen a spike in subscribers. Yeah. Yeah. Just by changing the name of my stupid of the stupid channel, uh, <laughs> I mean, how silly! I I never would have imagined. So I'm pretty uh, pretty stoked about that. I've received awesome. a couple phone calls from people saying they've watched some of the videos that they wouldn't have, wouldn't have seen, and I probably have a little bit more work to do. Yeah. Uh, on it, and yeah, so that was really really made a difference, and the. Um, I'm really focusing on, you know, you mentioned uh, the baby questions from last week and, yep. um, you know, nailing those questions. And in going through this process, I had already seen at least 40 keywords uh, wow. as I, uh, I've got four screens in front of me. So I was, you know, kind of multitasking and it's completely, uh, you know, completely available. Yeah. Yeah. Or are you uh, it all by any chance? What's that? Is that are you ADD at all by any chance? That's crazy. That's <laughs> yeah, well, I can use. I'm looking for three more, but then you know, uh, but uh, yeah, maybe so a little bit. Uh, but uh, you know, so I just am really excited to uh, everything that you've shared. It just is elegant and makes so much sense. And so sure. um, I just I just wanted to acknowledge that. Awesome. Well, thank you for the feedback. I I really appreciate that. And, and I'm curious on any of those calls. Did you notice? Um, were you able to tell a shift as far as not like they're like, Oh my gosh, it's, it's the guy on the YouTube video. But did you notice like, were they different than say your normal prospect calls who didn't come from YouTube just in, in terms of 
treating you with you know more authority or not being as challenging or did you or did you just not get into that that part of the conversation yeah you know the of the calls that I got they were not they were extremely basic and yeah. uh Okay, where'd you see it? Oh, I saw, you know, your uh, one of your videos. And I'm like, okay, which one did you see? And they shared it was on some credit thing. I'm like, well, where do I get a credit report? You know, and right. uh, you know, and it was at a very, at a, it was at a level five. Some, well, level maybe four. He recognized he had an issue going on. He was confronted, mm -hmm. didn't really, and he just recently started to, you know, allow his pain to bubble up instead of right. suppressing it. And, right. and, you know, and he's like, well, I don't really want to share too much, but yeah, I got something going on and, you know, and then I just gave him some, you know, then I just coached him as to what to do and where to go. Perfect. And so, yeah. yeah, so I can guess that, that more of those calls are not consistent with the kind of calls that I'm really interested in, although it will fill the funnel. I have no idea what that noise is. Hello? Sorry, I don't know if you can still hear me. Ryan. Yeah, I don't know what's going on there. Did everybody hear that, or is that just me? Yeah, I... Oh, okay. Oh, there it goes. Stopped. Is that, is that better? Yeah. That's from EDD, right? <laughs> there we go. Are we, are we all good now? It ain't going to be valid. I need one with a logo on it. It ain't gonna. It, you know what? Okay. okay, Corey, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. This is uh, this is the tech test week, man. All right, so I think we kind of got on Corey's question. Corey, you can pop back on. So, so Beverly was asking, do you find the market research traffic counts to be accurate? Um, do you ever compare the traffic info to? Yahoo, Bing, and other search engines. Yeah, Beverly, not. Um, I, I really don't compare it to, like, because there's, like, the Google keyword tool, you know, that's right. for Google.com. And, no, I really don't use that or the Yahoo or Bing because what people type on YouTube or into YouTube, it just tends to be a little more, there's certainly overlap, but there's definitely it's definitely different than what they type. When someone's on Google, they will usually um, you know what? Typing in is Trish can sit than and fucking wait. I'll call YouTube. her back. So I don't really use the the Google tools or the Bing tools because I just haven't found them. I don't care, helpful. and I don't I want my guy driving erect equipment, uh, so I got to deal with workers' comp cases. Tell her out. I'll just mute everybody here. Um, I have found that pull this up that using the auto suggest does give you a sense of volume, you know. So you can see here when I type this in, country swing dancing is going to be the most popular term, and as it goes down, it's going to be less popular as far as traffic volume. So I don't know. Yeah, this doesn't give us the exact like number of searches. But that's okay. I'd rather just have a video up based on the trend, and then later I can see how much traffic is it is it is bringing in. So okay. So if I understand what you're saying, Ryan, but just more importantly, put some stuff based on popularity, and don't worry about making it perfect from an analytic point of view. Just get going. Oh. Sorry about that. Let me try. Let's see if you guys switch my mic here. That's better. Okay. Um, 
So Beverly, as far as just answering your question about the traffic volume, and yeah, this doesn't, the auto suggest tool here doesn't give us traffic volume, but you know, it, it gives us a sense or the trend as far as whatever's up top, um, usually is going to be where there's a higher volume of searches versus what's on the bottom. And that's basically the best barometer I've found. I don't, I don't use the Google keyword tool or the Bing keyword tool because what people type in on Google and Bing um, can often be very different than what they're typing in when they go onto YouTube. Just their mindset and what they're looking for is different. So I don't, I don't really look into that camp. I just kind of borrow right from the YouTube suggest tool. And, and so far, um, it's worked out, you know, pretty well. I'm sure eventually, you know, again, because YouTube is a new, you know, we're kind of on the forefront of this. Google, I'm sure, is scrambling to build a keyword tool because they want people to be able to monetize and and buy ads on YouTube. So basically, we're kind of racing against Google in the sense that we want to, the faster that we can get our channels up and get traffic going and just tap into traffic now, the cheaper it'll be because what's Google, what Google is trying to do is turn YouTube paid ads and just YouTube itself into more of a commodity and reduce the barriers to entry so that people can get on very easily and spend mm -hmm. money and spend money with them. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, and the best example that you know, you may be familiar with is like the Google display network, like way back in the day, to make ban to run banner ads, well, you had to hire a designer or you had to make the banner ads yourself, and a lot mm -hmm. of people, and a lot of people just never did because that was a pain in the butt. Well, Google eventually introduced their display ad builder tool, which makes it super easy. You just type in a couple keywords, put in a picture, and boom, you've got a banner ad. And now they can fill up all those empty shelves. Yeah, I got you. They, they, they realize don't make it hard. Make this easy for people. Okay. Exactly, exactly. So we're still in it when it's kind of the hard phase. I mean, my job is to help make it easier for you, but it's harder for everybody else, which is why mm -hmm. which is why the traffic is so cheap and, and we're kind of ahead of the curve here. Okay. Um, cool. So does anybody else have any uh, questions on what we went over today? The credit. Well, I, this is Paul. Hey, Paul. So I, you know, my my issue maybe versus some of the others is potentially the credibility part. Um, I, I would maybe we can save this for our one on one potentially, but um, if there's someone else who has this issue, maybe it's a, a something we can share. But you know, my I don't have certifications. I you know I am the owner of this company thing, but. Um, well, yeah. So this uh, so this is a good question. Let me just kind of clarify. So Paul is is he has MaximumRunner.com, which is you're going into helping men. I believe it was 50. Um, who's your avatar, Paul? Yeah, basically, you know, mature men my, like myself. I'm basically trying to project, you know, people that are my situation and stage in life. I'm 52, so okay. people like myself who want to get in shape and and get fit running essentially perfect so um so yeah so you your question brings up a good one that i forgot and i just typed in which is you know one credibility statement you can use is affinity um which is like people like you because that's exactly who you're going after and you've already done it um i mean have you have you won you know you don't have to get first place but do you have any marathon awards or training awards or anything like that um I have lots of medals, people, you know, finisher, and then I set a goal to be in the top 25 in my age group, and I did do that. But it, it's, uh, you'd be surprised how fast these, even the older guys are. Yeah. Well, and, and that's what you can, you know, I think that's where I would look um, is somewhere in my, you know, so in your case, I would look somewhere in your story and say, you know, and, and you can even, kind of coin a term and we can di dive into this later, but it's still, I think helpful for other people. You can still, you can also like coin a term um, like the, you know, the mature marathon man or whatever, um, whatever you want to call it, call yourself as far as something that your target market will identify with and, and maybe relate to as far as from an affinity standpoint. So it doesn't just have to be certifications. It can just be something that, says 
in some way, hey, I've done this too, or I'm going through this struggle too, because YouTube is all about connection. So if if you if there's another you know 52 year old guy or 55 year old guy who's like just wanting to get started running, um, and I do a video like, and I'm like, here's how to run a marathon. Well, like even if I say I'm a CSCS, that might help, but if they see me and then they see a video about that you say, you know, same content, you know, how to run a marathon. But they see, hey, this is from Paul, the you know, fifty-two-year-old champ or whatever. Um, they're going to relate more to you because you have gone through the, the pains and struggles that they can identify with. I see what you're saying. I think that sounds good. Perfect. Good. What about you, Jack? Any? Uh, is this all making sense or any questions? Are you able to see the slides? I see you're on the phone. Or maybe your screen's there. Oh, sorry about that. I had me muted. No, no, I'm doing really good and following along. Thank you. Okay, perfect, perfect. Um, okay, so if there's not any other questions on this topic, do we have any questions on the oh, – what about targeting specific markets? Um, so, David, could you expand on that a little bit more? Uh, David was asking about targeting specific markets. So do you mean as far as the video topics? Like the IT industry. Yeah, so we want to think about um, what you want to do when you're, when you're coming up with these, when you're going through this process is first start back here, which is your customer avatar. And you can have multiple avatars. Um, but whoever, whoever, it's always good to start with your best customer avatar. So if you have customers now, who are your favorite customers and think about them. Um, so let's just say you had someone who, who is, uh, I guess a CTO, David. Um, and because I think you were, you help actually, you help more small businesses, companies with five to 50, well, five to 50 computers and at least one server. So, yeah. So if they have a, um, a CTO, like what, what are some, so let's say he's the avatar, then we go through some broad questions, like what are questions that he might be asking or that him and his team might be talking about in the general sphere of um, the, the IT industry, so related to their business. So it could be like, you know, they could be asking like, what's the best computer, you know, what are the, or what's the best server? Um, or what's the best server for e-commerce or what's the best server, you know, like they may be getting the real technical questions about the, the equipment. None of those have anything to do with fixing the product or viruses, which is fine, but you could certainly as a, com as a computer expert talk about, okay, well, here's the three best servers and here's why. Um, and that would be, you know, that would be at that stage four where they're looking at, you know, um, upgrading their systems or just answering questions about their systems and you can come in now you're the authority and so when they do have virus problems or whatever problems that you help solve you're going to be in the front of line in the front of the line um, so from from the from that question then you pull out the keywords so it's like best server so with a company that small I typically deal with the owner yeah so then so then just think about David, what um, let me see your sheet. What the owners are asking. Um, so here, so yeah, so in your questions, I would probably go through and redo them because you have like, how long have you been in business? Do you have any references? I think that's more of the questions they might be asking you personally, but instead we want to be asking what are the questions that they're asking about pains um, of running their computers. So it's like maybe maybe they're like, should I be using Mac or PC, you know, I don't know, you know, they could be switching that, or maybe they're, they're like, what's the best windows networking software? Um, what's the best compute? What's the best printer for my, for the, for our server? So the questions that are not related directly to viruses or malware, but instead related to, you know, the, the business, what are, you know, the, the, the business owner is going to be asking. Um, so it's just kind of broad. So that's something, yeah, so for you, I would definitely go a little more broader, not questions about you, David, but questions about the owners that's asking himself, um, 
as far as the equipment that he's using or just anything related to that. And if you still have more questions on that later, we can do it. We can use maybe our one-on-one -on -one session to dive into it. Um, but I would, so let's see, Mr. So Minecraft, so we don't want that. Uh, so business, so small business server, small business server setup. Like maybe you do a whiteboarding video where you're showing like, you know, just a quick outline of how to set up servers. So, so just, this is, again, I, I know, I mean, I know a little bit of IT stuff, actually really not much, but I, at least some of the terms. So just that should hopefully give you kind of a, okay. Hope you found that helpful. Make sure you click the links below to download the worksheets if you would like those. And if you want more help, you can hire me by going to my website down below. Thanks.